All right, so my name is Randall uh, Portel, and um, I'm born and bred in Manenburg, so I'm like the son of the soil. Um, I think for the record, uh, I'm the first doctor historically from Manenburg that was pointed out to me by various people. So I'm just grateful for, to be a part of that statistic. At least there's something positive um, and being the first, per, first doctor from Manenburg. Um, yeah, I'm currently employed by the Department of Health. Um, I'm in a registrar program um, for family medicine. I mean, I'm doing my master's in family medicine, and that's via UCT. But uh, I still rotate in government facilities, and at the moment I am rotating through uh, the Department of Statistics and Gynecology, uh, and that's at New Somerset Hospital under the leadership of um, Professor Petro. So that's, that's, that's my current um, status at the moment. We've all been hit by uh, this pandemic um, called coronavirus or COVID-19, whichever way you want to put it. And um, the reason for the lockdown is basically to prevent spread. Um, we've recently found that uh, the virus also spreads from, or from human to human um, or between pe people. Um, and yeah, and that's why we needed to flatten the curve. I mean, if, if we all uh, listened to the president attentively or read his documents, um, there was a rapid increase in people contracting coronavirus um, and we needed to stop the spread. So hence the lockdown. And that's basically just for, for us to, to distance people. I mean, if we all had to still, um, you know, go into town, go into the waterfront, you know, go to, to gatherings, etc. Um, that would be just a hub for the virus to spread. Um, and hence the lockdown for everybody basically to stay home. Um, and to isolate, and I mean, as far as possible, um, to reduce the sort of human contact. Um, because we don't know who's got the virus. So, I mean, it's probably safer just to isolate yourself or to, to, to stay at home. And then that definitely will help to flatten the curve. We just heard last night um, from the president, I think from a 42% um, sort of um, infection rate, we, we're basically down to 4%. So um, this past two weeks has definitely helped um, with, with uh, the attempt to flatten the curve. Yeah, number one is basically, you know, washing your hands. And um, because, I mean, the virus basically sits on your hands. And um, we found that soapy water or alcohol-based, um, you know, hand sanitizers and gels uh, basically kills off the virus. Uh, you need about 20, 20 second contact time. So hence, that's why it's recommended that we wash our hands for at least 20, 20 seconds at a time. So one of the new things that also came forth um, from one of the, the, the videos that I've seen on hand washing is that we actually have to wash our forearms as well, actually go up to the level of our elbow, um, especially if you're wearing short-sleeved T-shirts or, or shirts, etc., and your forearms are exposed. Um, one should actually wash up until the level of your elbows. So that, that that's another new... Um, sort of trend that I see coming through. Then, obviously, our social distancing, which is which is the important one. I mean, everybody recommends at least that you are at least one meter or 100 centimeters, you know, from somebody that's that's coughing and sneezing, etc. The reason being is that the, the virus is spread in droplet form, um, and if you are within one meter or 1.5 meters. I mean, somebody sneezing and coughing can actually, you know, cough the, the, the water droplets onto you. Um, and by you touching it, then touching your face, eyes and ear, uh, face, um, you know, eyes and so on, the virus can sort of get into your system um, through the mucosal lining or the layer that we, whichever way you want to call it. So that's where the social distancing comes in. Um, and then, you know, avoid touching your nose, uh, you know, mouth and, and eyes because that's your mucosal surfaces, and that's, that's the way that uh, the virus sort of gets into your body and then gets into the blood supply, et cetera, and then gets, gets carried to where it needs to, or where it causes harm. Um, and then just uh, on the respiratory hygiene, basically, so what we recommend is when people cough, we actually want you to cough into a flexed elbow or actually a bent elbow, in medical terms, into your cubicle fossa. So maybe I can demonstrate, Nick, it's basically just coughing in your... <coughs> sort of in your elbow, not the front part of your elbow, but the back part of your elbow, which is obviously um, easily reached. Or if, if you can't do it, I mean, you can cough into a tissue, etc. but then you have to discard of that immediately. Um, so that's why I wouldn't recommend like a handkerchief, because I mean, if you, if you cough and sneeze into a handkerchief, uh, the virus will just, be, will just be chilling there. 
Um, and I, I don't think anybody would want to throw away the handkerchiefs after one use. I would recommend them first to basically call the COVID hotline. Um, and this hotline would definitely streamline and, and, and ask you some questions and do a sort of a screening for you and then advise you at to which, to which facility to go. The reason why we first want to do that sort of triage part um, is to make sure that we don't have people that's, that's positively infected with COVID still to travel around, etc. So the screening will help us to identify those who are mild. Um, they can stay at home, self-isolate, and sort of the symptoms will do, sort, of, sort of mitigate. But those who are extremely short of breath, um, uh, you know, they're breathing fast, um, probably body aches and pains all over, um, the hotline would assist you, and maybe we should get all of the ambulance to take you. Because the facility where you're going, I mean, they would also need prior warning so that they could isolate you accordingly. So whoever brings the person to hospital probably need to ensure that they've got a mask, et cetera, so that they cannot spread, um, you know, the virus, as we know, by, by droplet spread, coughing and sneezing, and then maybe also by the surfaces that they are touching. So I think the hotline here is quite important. Now, in our communities, I mean, you know, there's always a helpful neighbor, et cetera, you know, somebody that wants to take people to hospital. Um, it will still be advisable to call the hotline. I mean, you can be a good Samaritan by taking somebody, but we also don't want to crowd our health care facilities. Um, but I think government has also put something into place. If people should rock up at the hospital, most of your hospitals now, you would find like a triage tent, um, which is in front of the hospital, and another screening process will take place there. Um, so that is just to safeguard uh, getting persons that are actually positive or persons under investigation into hospital and trying disseminating the, the virus. So there is a sort of a second catch point um, when they reach a hospital facility that they, they will be triaged on the outside or a, a well-ventilated tent or something just to, to catch those ones that are really, really, really positive with symptoms. Our concern is definitely that people are not adhering um, to the regulations in Manenburg. I mean, if you, if you go through Manenburg now, uh, you'll find people on the streets, it's, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, um, they're, just, they're just not eating the call. Um, yes, I know it's difficult. We've got our social ills, but again, that's a topic for another day. Um, people are also ignorant. That's also a topic for another day, um, if one looks at history as, as to where it comes from. But, um, yeah, my message basically would be to our people is, you know, you cannot see coronavirus. Um, you don't know who's a carrier. So you might come into contact with somebody that might just be having a simple cough and cold, etc. And that person could be spreading it. And but by the time you realize it, I mean, you've literally gone around and infected basically most people around you. So the incubation period is about two weeks. It's 14 days. And um, if we don't sort of isolate, I mean, how many people do we come in contact with within 14 days? Um, I mean, I don't want to mention specific hotspots in Manenburg, but I mean, I particularly see around, you know, the taxi activity. I mean, there's so many guys involved in the taxi industry there, you know, you know, loading passengers, etc. I mean, if one of them should be positive, and I mean, they give it to somebody that's in a taxi that goes to wherever they need to be, um, it's just a domino effect. I mean, it just spreads on. Um, I've also noticed people queuing at, you know, certain shopping, you know, outlets and shops, etc. Um, and not observing the, the social distancing. Uh, that could obviously be a potential problem for us. So, I mean, especially in garages and, and you know, those, those, those shopping outlets. So those are, those, those are the hotspots for me, basically, um, you know, in Manenburg. There are talks. Um, about the community screening you've seen in certain, um, you know, Cape Flats communities that's already started. Um, and I think it will definitely come through to, 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 to most of the areas. Um, the thing is, Nick, I mean, screening is definitely needed um, because we need to know who's got the virus. I mean, people might have the virus and not be necessarily sick, but they, they're still a carrier and it could still spread. The problem is if, if, if that virus gets to somebody who's, who's, who's immunocompromised or immune system is weak, I mean, especially our elderly, um, you know, our diabetic patients, our HIV patients, I mean, our TB patients, I mean, they are the ones that could, that, that, that could definitely become more ill. And, and, and those are the ones that might, might come to, to the fore, but they could have gotten the virus from somebody that's got a bit of a stronger immune system that's just a carrier that could self-isolate. Or, or, or whether where, um, the illness could just mitigate by itself. 
So screening is definitely needed. Uh, we need to test more because the scenario can be, I mean, people can pass on and somebody could just say, ah, oh, that person was sick. I mean, they had a flu, et cetera, and they passed on. But if they weren't tested, I mean, we could be missing, uh, you know, COVID numbers. So I think screening is definitely, definitely, definitely uh, important. And I think there's going to be more work um, coming into these communities to screen and to test people um, a whole lot more. Um, I've, I've actually put up my hand to, to some of the authorities and said, look, I'm available um, to volunteer or, look, I'm currently employed by the Department of Health. I mean, if they feel that I need to go that way or... Yeah, whichever. I mean, I'm willing to, to offer my assistance. So, yeah, but screening is definitely necessary. That, 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 I'm not going to, to, to run away from that fact. Um, we, we need to allow these people in when they come. Obviously, they need to be properly uh, credentialed. And um, I would really advise people to, to adhere. And, I mean, nonsense with this thing of fake music shit. So, we need to test people. And, I mean, those people will probably get the results back as well. And it will just help us uh, tremendously. There are definitely cases, um, and there are definitely a few people that's, that, that's in the ICU. So the, the, the correct stats I can't give you because, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm limiting my exposure to the, to the ICU as well because, I mean, if I'm not needed, it's non-essential for me to go there um, because I could contract it. But, um, yeah, there are definitely people, and I definitely know of people that has, that has passed on, and um, I definitely know of people that's quite ill that's in ICU. So it is a reality. Um, look, the fortunate thing for me is I'm obviously a little bit closer to the action um, as what my community members in Manenberg would be, and hence, you know, the, the disparity, uh, you know, in our thinking. Um, and that is what I'm just saying is I would rather put out a positive message to my, to my people from Manenberg and say, look, guys, stay safe. Um, the virus is not too far off. It can eat outdoors any time. And, I mean, we're not spared. We're not spared at all. I mean, you can wear a mask if, if, if that's okay. But uh, the mask then needs to cover your mouth and your nose. I mean, you can't just have a mask covering your mouth. I mean, I mean, if, if, you, if you're spreading or sneezing, I mean, your nose is then open. You, I mean, you can still spread. And I think the purpose of the mask is basically for those who are, you know, a person under investigation or a suspect for coronavirus to wear a mask while we're waiting for the test. Or those who test positive, you know, um, it's basically for them to wear the mask to prevent the spread. I mean, a lot of the community members do wear the mask and that's to protect themselves, which is great. I mean, you can also do that. But then you can't tamper with the mask. You can't touch the mask all the time. Um, and it needs to stay on at least for, you know, eight hours. I mean, and you need to protect the integrity of the mask. So I've seen quite a few people just walking around with a mask covering the mouth only and not the nose. So I don't think there will be any, any relevance in that. Um, I've also noticed people walking around with gloves. Um, I mean... You know, gloves is like your hand. I mean, it's just a barrier. So, I mean, if you've got the infection on your, on your glove and, I mean, you're keeping the glove on your hands for eight hours, you can still spread the virus um, by touching your face, nose, etc. So, um, I don't really see a point in, in wearing gloves in the community. Um, I mean, I would rather advise that you, you know, wash your hands more regularly and after any contact with any person or surface, etc., that you use hand sanitizer. I mean... If you can't afford the sanitizer, I mean, then, then, then wash your hands with soapy water. Um, but wearing gloves and going from door to door, you know, people, per, per, persons to persons, I mean, that's, that, that's a potential for, 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 for spreading the virus. I mean, in hospital, we, we only use gloves basically when we, when we touch a patient or, or surfaces, etc. And, and it's a single use. I mean, after one use, then, then that's it. It gets discarded into, in, into the bin. And if we go to a next patient, um, I mean, you use using UCL gloves. So, I mean, those are the two things that I've basically just picked up while coming home from work. Um, just seeing people, you know, wearing these protective equipments, but I mean, obviously in, in not in the right way. To my community of Manenberg, you know, as being a, like a son of the soil, as they say, um, you know, these are difficult times that we are living in. Um, and do not think for a moment that, you know, the pandemic of coronavirus cannot eat us um, in Manenburg. Um, I know it's not easy at the moment um, due to circumstances, you know, I mean, we've got small houses, I mean, we've got large families, uh, we've got a lot of informal structures, I mean, there's a high density of people in a small space. So it's definitely not easy to stay indoors, you know, to wash our hands all the time, etc. But 
um, you know, please just heed the call. I mean, if you can wash your hands as often as possible, and if you can sanitize, I mean, because we know from medical research, those are the ways that the virus can get spread. And we just want to limit the spread as far as possible. So, you know, as soon as this whole pandemic is over, um, you know, we can then again start visiting and socializing. I don't think we're going to miss out on everything or on anything. So my advice would please be, please, 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 please heed the call of our president. Um, please listen to, 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 to the medical experts. Um, you know, stay at home, limit, you know, social gatherings and activities as far as possible. Um, my fear is that, you know, one or two persons get infected in Manenburg, it spreads like wildfire, and, you know, it would be sad, I mean, for family members to lose uh, loved ones um, with coronavirus. And, I mean, there's such a lot of information out there. Now, I know it doesn't get to everybody. Um, I know not everybody has internet, etc. but, I mean, there's at least one person um, you know, with a cell phone that can Google signs and symptoms, etc. Um, my advice would be is if you're at home and you don't, you don't know what to do with your family, I mean, Google, I mean, uh, you know, Google coronavirus, Google, you know, things to do, um, you know, Google, you know, what's, what's, what's relevant. I mean, instead of just spending all your data on Facebook and, and, and WhatsApp, you know, sending along messages that everybody's actually sending along all the time. So, yeah, and please, I mean, you know, limit going to the shops if it's not necessary. Limit, you know, spreading unnecessary fake news, um, making fun of this pandemic. Um, it's really serious, and um, I wouldn't want to see any, any, any of my fellow community members uh, be struck by coronavirus and, and, and succumbing to that.